Hello folks, my name is Armin. Uh, welcome back here to the studio. Uh, today I have a couple of stories to get in detail over and uh, the first one is quite funny. Uh, but first of all, I want to tell you how grateful I am that uh, you all like my uh, imagery on Instagram and a lot of you are followers. But a few weeks ago, I saw a comment that said, uh, why do you keep doing this kind of work? It gives me a headache. I can't look at it. Uh, I, I just stop doing it. So I thought it was quite funny that I incurred this uh, emotion in the viewer. So I wrote her back and said, you know, thank her for her comment and to say that, you know, actually I was happy that I encouraged an emotion from her and uh, um, said I was sorry that I gave you a headache. So as a disclaimer, I want to let you know that I don't intend to give you all a headache or upset stomach. If so, I will send you all an aspirin or uh, Pepto-Bismol. But I want to speak more in detail about my uh, work and the origin of the imagery. Um, and it's been a mystery to me, but I think more I examine why I keep producing this type of imagery, which I call organic abstraction, and it is organic, it comes from the natural world. I look back to my, really my early life as a young kid, and I would say from the ages of nine through 12, I had a very unique experience being exposed to a lot of living organisms in an academic setting. And that happened to be with, uh, my dad that uh, was awarded a National Science Foundation grant, which was created by Jack Kennedy. It was to improve the standard and level of our science teachers because at that time, uh, the Soviet Union just put the uh, astronaut into space and he was feeling a little miffed and competitive. So he wanted our science teachers to catch up. So this master's program was to advance our science teachers. And my dad uh, was accepted at Howard University for one semester, and then three other semesters, summer, these were each summer semesters for four years. And the other semester was at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. So our whole family, we would go and to Oxford, Ohio, stay in the dorms with all these other high school teachers and whatnot, advancing their degrees to uh, get a master. And my dad chose the discipline of uh, a master's in zoology. So as a result, I was exposed to all these textbooks of geology, paleontology. Paleontology is a study of fossils, uh, invertebrate, vertebrate, uh, biology. Uh, ornithology, study of birds, botany, ichthyology, study of fish, and uh, throw in a few other ologies. So, he would have tons of these books around lab manuals. They all were full of diagrams, which fascinated me. And, and in that era, a college textbook was basically a hand drawn diagram, it's nothing digital as you see today. So they were quite fascinating on the merit of just being a drawing. But in the course of uh, these summers spent at Miami University, I would get lost on campus. Uh, you know, my mother never knew where I was, but I'd wander around and I always found a way to get into the uh, geology building and the, in the zoology buildings, and they were like self-contained museums. And I would sneak around and open doors that shouldn't have been open. I'm the only kid walking around. Nobody, there was nobody there to really reprimand me, tell me, ask me, what are you doing here, kid? So I would go into these special areas with flat files, and I'd pull out trays full of fossils, specimens. I would see various invertebrate, vertebrate, and formaldehyde jars. Uh, I would see the bird collection, their insect collection from the entomology department. So all of this had a strong impression 
on me in those summers and at that age I was starting to like to draw so I would start to draw these organisms and I wish I had them still but God knows where they are they got thrown out or lost uh, so when I departed from my realistic drawing and illustration which I was an illustrator for a good 40 years and graphic designer all your work is tight, it's commercial, it's meant to uh, meet a deadline, it's meant to formulate some form of communication that has editorial accuracy and content. But at night, I would come home and depart uh, from that kind of work that's stressful, intense, and exacting to abstract work. But I always started with um, these kind of inanimate objects, yet or they were organic. And I, in just recently, probably in the last year since I've gotten more serious with my work, I'm starting to realize I'm going to a color palette that's inspired by, say, the insect coloring, exotic insects, because I saw these exotic insects. My dad had these collections of insects. We used to go out into the cornfields, farm, farmland at night and turn on the cars, car lights. So all these bugs and insects would come to the, these men in the master's program and they had these nets, almost like a lacrosse net. And they'd grab onto these insects, they'd put them in a jar that euthanized them, hopefully compassionately, but uh, then they would mount these because they were responsible for creating a phylum of insects. So you start from phylum to, I think it's uh, genus, uh, genus or species or the other way around. But I know ph phylum is the top order of uh, classifying organisms. So I call this the ascent of phylum. Well, you know, all these little characters in here might be a phylum. And, but I don't intend to draw anything representational of an insect or a fossil or a vertebrate or invertebrate. And uh, basically, I think I struck on what's inspiring my work. And I think it goes back to tapping into a subconscious that got richly created at a young age. So a young age is important how you are exposed to things. And, I, you know, I was very lucky. And I think it's starting to come out in this abstract work. What I like to do now is bring the uh, camera up here close so you can, and take it over the surface so you can see closer what I'm doing. This piece is done. I've worked on this, as I said, almost 700 hours. And I work on it with uh, oil bars, oil pastels, the base layer could be a oil paint that's thinned out real thin and I use rags just to tone the paper, just to see shapes and imagery, what I might pull out from that kind of ooze of color and tone and patina. But at this point I've worked on this, this is like an archival watercolor paper. I've worked on it so much that the uh, oil bars have glossed over, they're a bit waxed over and it really can't take any more color so i've ostensibly finished this thing it, it just has no more life to it in the surface which is fine and next i'll start moving on to canvases but let me bring the camera over the top of this let's see if i can uh, do this properly so you can see up close what I do here on the surface and you, you'll see I, I, I do a lot of uh, creating tension in my pieces uh, with force. You know I'll have two objects here that are in force in opposition to each other but the, you know the, there's an energy coming out of here and then to enhance that energy I'm creating luminosity. And is that luminosity letting you in? Are you able to come out? But the tension in the luminosity creates a path. 
I think, throughout all my work, so you can kind of travel through it. So this gives you a good indication up close what's happening. And I'll use a color palette, as you see, that's, uh, I, I call it uh, kind of a, it's an insect coloring. You know, as I said, I've, I've seen so many types of exotic insects in collections of uh, entomologists that, and they shimmer, they're beautiful colors. Uh, these colors could be an exotic fish, they could be in the plant forms, but I tend to vacillate to these colors often and they give me a lot of energy, they feel good, feels good to work with them and they just shimmer and I like the feeling of bringing out the light, the dimension and the balance. You also see I'll create a lot of shapes that incur balance. For instance, you have a structure here that it's somehow balanced on something else. And then you have luminosity happening at the same time. So ba I, I find balance, tension of shapes budding next to each other, and then balancing the shapes, plus the shimmering of colors and luminosity. There are four elements that I keep repeating. And it gets real hard for me to work down here low. I work on my knees, actually, and uh, try to put a pad there to soften the blow. So this is the surface of this piece. And I have thousands of these in my imagination that uh, I can't wait to get to. And get to probably on a stretch canvas because the life of the canvas will last longer than this painting, I mean uh, water on this watercolor paper. So there you go. Thank you for coming again and looking at my work and giving me nice comments. And I hope this didn't give you all a headache. Take care.